scholars can tell me differently and I'd be glad to hear 
from what I could find, that's all we know. We know his name. We know his father's name. We know he was wanted to see again. And he left following Jesus. Now I want to tell you about my journey. Many years ago, about 15 now, I heard Jesus calling to me, and I followed him in the role of the diaconate. And I'm going to right now take a moment to suggest to you that when we came for a convention, the Eucharistic celebration was full of deaconess. <laughs> the preacher was our archdeacon. And after she spoke, there were people that said, how do we get a deacon? How do we get a deacon? You know? So, listen to that on the diocesan website as soon as they get it up. But my journey started about 15 years ago. A number of years ago, I came to swim. And I served here ever since. Two deacons in one place. Two years ago, I moved to Port Townsend. Well, for those of you that are not used to driving that road, it's about 34 miles from my door to this door. So for the last two years, I've con continued to make that journey. And it's normal when we have a transition to a new record for everybody that's on staff, so to speak, and all of us volunteer people are on staff, to give the new rector a letter of resignation. And then, then the new rector gets to pick and choose who she wants. So during that period of time, while everybody was searching and thinking about who our new rector would be, I kept having these thoughts about, was this a time for me to make a transition to a parish closer to home? St. Paul's in Port Townsend is about seven miles from my house as compared to 34 or 35. And just on a sidebar, that's where my wife goes to church. <laughs> <laughs>
gospel and all sorts of things we've been doing. We've been having a wonderful time together, and she's about to, well, she's a little unhappy with me. <laughs> but the answer to my position seemed to be to discuss it with the bishop, because I work for him. So does Diane, but just for the record. Um, so I made that decision to contact him and say, I think I would be more use in this kingdom of God at Fort, in Fort Townsend at St. Paul's than I am here. And it's true. And the more I've gotten used to it, the more I realize it. And you know, occasionally, well, every Sunday, I'll get to sit in the, be in the same worship space with my wife. And that's important to me. As I see all of you sitting around and your couples around, you know, that's an important part of my, the remainder of my life. So on December the 2nd, is it the 2nd or the 3rd, the first Sunday of Advent, I will start serving them. Some of their parishioners that know me are already coming to me and say, so-and-so, get somebody to go visit them here and there, somewhere else. So that's my journey. And you will see me around. You know, one of the things that both rectors have said to me, we have these sort of warring rectors, because Mother Cleola has looked at it was Mother Diane and said, who took my deacon? <laughs> she didn't take me. God took me to continue to do the ministry that I am called to do. As I came over the mountain this morning, a hill, really it's a hill, not a mountain. <laughs> it was about 6.40 a.m. because that's what time it takes me to get there from home to come here, to be here at 7.30 so we can set up for an 8 o'clock service. It was in the clouds. It was in the fog. And as I came over, and it was pitch black. I mean, you know, some days it's black, some days it's just black or black. <laughs> and it started pouring down rain as soon as I came over the hill. Last year, at Christmas time, didn't get to be here because they get you. As all, many of you maybe remember us, that we had snow. <coughs> yes, kids, we get snow. <laughs> Look forward to that because it's fun if you're not driving on the road. <laughs> so that's my story. I've enjoyed working with all of you. <coughs> I've really enjoyed helping the school Mother Cleola on how we think, do things at St. Luke's. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> I have four more weeks to <laughs> So, you know, we'll be here. We're going to have a party on my last Sunday, I think is the way it's going to be. And I'm sure we'll have food because we're good Episcopalians. So I want to go back to Barnabas. What does Barnabas have to do with all this? Let's see if I can spill that water. <laughs> Barnabas got his sight. Barnabas could hear Christ. I failed to hear Christ for quite a while and spent a fair amount of energy wondering why I wasn't giving the message. Bartimaeus could see, and we know he could hear. And he went out to serve Christ. That's a journey that we all need to continue. Now, I know that we have times when we're out of touch somehow. And we want to know why he doesn't answer our prayers. And sometimes, I, in my life, it's probably because I'm not listening. So I'm going to encourage all of you to open those eyes that see and those ears that he, hear, even if you have trouble hearing, and listen to Christ and what he has for you to do. Bartimaeus was sitting in the dirt and got up 
bishops, big, big things that he likes to repeat frequently is that we as deacons need to go out in the world around us, find the trouble that is there, and come back and talk to the people about, at the church about that trouble and what we can do to help fix it. My friend Francis left us some words. Remember when you leave this earth that you can take with you nothing that you have received. 